Welcome to the 1965 season of Indy 500 Evolution. As per tradition, this season kicks off where the 1964 season ended at Trenton. But unlike the other races and seasons in the career mode, I've finally broken my self-proclaimed Trenton curse. I took the victory in the final race at Trenton in the 1964 season, and in doing so, I was able to beat A.J. Foyt to the 1964 championship. Now, 1965 is very much finally the transitional year in IndyCar racing. The rear engine cars are absolutely the car to have going into this season. And in my head cannon about 1965, my triumph in 1964 with a rear engine Halibrand chassis over AJ Foyt's front engine chassis convinced drivers such as AJ Foyt who were quite stubborn and were sticking with the front engine technology to switch over to rear engine cars. Now I haven't rested on my lawyer laurels. We are not going to be racing with my 1964 weapon which was the Halibrand chassis. No, we have up graded to a 1965 chassis. This car is called a Brawner. Uh, of course, the Brawner in it is for Clint Brawner, the designer of the car. It also may be known as a Brawner Hawk, though that's not uh, until a little while down the line. Regardless, we've got a 1965 Ford engine in the car. It's the most powerful uh, that we can have access to at this point in history. It was an 8 horsepower advantage over my 1964 Offenhauser. It also has four more cylinders. The Offenhausers were four-cylinder engines, the Fords V8s. And I've also upgraded to a five-speed gearbox. Now, the 1965 season, again, going to be dominated by the rear engine chassis, particularly of Jim Clark and the Lotus team. They are going to be the stiffest competition going into this season. But there's a few other drivers who may make a bit of a splash, including some rookie named Mario. So let's head to Trenton, New Jersey to get the season underway. So welcome to New Jersey, Trenton, as Johnny Rutherford is going to qualify a in a Halibrand chassis car. Bud Tinglestad is here. And there's another Our rookie here, Al Unser. I think he may uh, may do some good things later on. Let's see where Al Unser qualifies. He puts a second on the grid right now. Arnie Knepper is coming out next, and he goes to the pole position. He's in a front engine car. The start. Very interesting. Car 66 Billy Foster goes to fourth. Run. Parnelli Jones is back and probably will be on the pole position in his car rear engine car. And look, that appears to be a Lotus. Speed. I believe that's a Lotus, if I'm mistaken. I'm probably looking really stupid right now. But Parnelli Jones in his Lotus goes to the pole position a at the moment. Class. And E.J. Foyt in his Lotus goes to the pole position. The, the two drivers who were running Watsons, from the front engine cars the last season, have now gone to rear engine cars. And they're right back car up at the front. Jim McElreath goes to eighth. Another rookie, Gordon Johncock. Goes to 8th on the grid. Very interesting. It's funny how as the tide is turning, we're starting to recognize maybe some more names, maybe some more my viewers are familiar with, some modern drivers or modern-ish drivers, uh, some drivers in the past 30 years. As Don Branson, my old rival, goes to 2nd. And uh, that uh, Joe Leonard guy, he looks like a somebody who could be somebody uh, in the future, but he runs 15th right now. Mario Andretti, ninth place, ninth place for the rookie. And we've got Roger McCluskey putting the car 14th on the grid. And then we've got George Ziggy Snyder going 18th on the grid. Al Miller is going to go right out ahead of me and goes to second on the grid. Wow. It's a bit of a surprise considering some of the names that we know and some of the names that we don't know. So it'll be Lucas Dalton and Bill Cheeseburg going out after me, but let's see where the old, or the new, I shouldn't say old Brawner, the new Brawner chassis with the Ford engine will place us on the grid. So, here we go. Gonna prove to the rookies in the field that I'm still the top dog as the 64 and reigning national champion here at Trenton, ready to get qualifying if the game will ever let me drive the car. Come on, let me drive it. All right, we're underway. And as you can see, this uh, Brawner is awfully wide. It's even wider as far as I'm concerned uh, than the uh, Halibrand I was running in the last season. Just look how wide that rear track is and the big rear tires are definitely uh, daunting as I definitely got the slide on going through uh, turn number three that time. Uh, certainly want to clean that up as we head on to the qualifying attempt. Got the warm-up, obviously. Going to be pretty careful on this lap. Sometimes I run a faster warm-up at Trenton 
then I actually qualify, so hopefully we can uh, rectify that problem. You can see a big radiator on the side of the car. That doesn't look particularly aerodynamic there on the left side as we go through the right-handed turn at Trenton, going by the subdivision or storage units or whatever that is over there. I suppose that's probably still there, isn't it? Uh, of course, Trenton Speedway was torn down in the early 1980s, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what was here and what wasn't. And there's a Ferris wheel over there. That's the first time I've noticed that on this track. There's a Ferris wheel down the... Well, I guess it's a... Oh, yeah. I'm stupid. Trenton Speedway was uh, on what used to be the New Jersey State Fairgrounds. So, yeah, that would make sense that I saw a Ferris wheel. The, the fairgrounds are also, I believe, demolished. And uh, some art garden or something is uh, on the side of this track. A bit of a shame. Uh, the true art was uh, Lotuses and Bronner Hawks and uh, Watsons and uh, the kind of cars that we're racing today. I just realized that I don't believe I saw Jimmy Clark, so I guess Jimmy Clark is just going to show up for Indianapolis and Milwaukee and not really try for the championship, despite the fact it's the final that he was in the running for it last season. And I should be paying some attention to the speed because we are right now seven miles an hour faster than A.J. Foyt right now. So really throwing down the gauntlet, I believe AJ's at 140 miles an hour. I'm at 146. Good grief. The Brawner is overpowered. So much power in this car. I guess that Ford engine really doing the trick right now and the chassis obviously working pretty well as well as we head down the main straightaway. Put the car in the shell, put it on the pole and reassert some dominance early on in the season. Identical laps. So managing to do identical laps on both laps, I, I was actually surprised about that. Managed to put the car on the pole, the brand new Brawner looking like the hot ticket at the moment. Let's take a look at the full starting grid. Bill Cheeseburg went to second right there at the end at 141 miles an hour. So the competition getting a little more stiff towards the back of the grid. I guess the track was uh, uh, fairly rubbered in at, by that point, as you can see some of the rookies where are they? We've got Al Unser and Mario Andretti starting next to each other. Johnny Rutherford, of course, he's not a rookie, but he's a younger driver. Gordon Johncock back there, as well as Joe Leonard and George Snyder starting way near the back. So we might actually be lapping them. Of course, this is a, the 150-mile race, so 25 laps should be much shorter uh, than the 300-miler that uh, finishes out the season. But you never know if we'll be running into a lot of lap traffic. just kind of depends on the race pace. So let's go racing here at Trenton. Welcome to Trenton International Speedway. This 1.5 mile oval track is very fast and a popular stop for all the drivers and teams. All right, ready to go here at Trenton. The 1965 season is about to get underway. Cheeseburg and Foyt and Parnelli. Everybody going racing here in the rear engined revolution which is on for 1965 as you can see already starting to pull away from the competition already got a big gap in turn one i'm actually kind of surprised that i was able to pull out that quite that much of a lead but there's the treacherous turn three which always seems to be a problem for me car got through there pretty well so well looks like we're gonna have a fairly trouble free race as the pack fans out down the main straightaway. But again, really, really got a good jump off the start. And now I can kind of take it a bit easy early on. Now this is kind of gonna be another one of those question mark races where you don't really know how this is all gonna react. Are the cars gonna be harder to drive? Is there gonna be some crashes in the back? A lot of times, I've seen it in Milwaukee races in particular. Uh, the rear ender guys, the tail ender guys, will crash and cause all sorts of mayhem and chaos. And sometimes that can catch me out. So, we've got to be careful of that as we get down here into turn one, down a gear. Really taking it easy. I'm not even going nearly as fast or trying nearly as hard as I was in qualifying. And a lot of times, that smooth driving will often kind of reward you. You'll actually drive faster just taking it easy than you would if you were you know driving like a bat out of hell and so Cheeseburg really kind of an interesting uh, driver to be running up in second place he was very competitive I believe in 1962 for the uh, I believe the Dean Van Lines team or something like that 
but for whatever reason, just hasn't really been there in the last couple of seasons. But once you got him in a rear engine car, suddenly he's right there. Not sure exactly what chassis he's running. It kind of maybe was possibly a Watson. No, I'm not particularly sure. I do wish that. Uh, car number one uh -oh. is smoking. Car, car number, number one. one. Is That's AJ. AJ Foyd in trouble. Car number one is smoking. So not a good start to the 64 championship runner-up. Obviously, he's wearing number one because we can't change history quite that much. And, yeah, the Foyt's coming out of the pits, and several other cars are in the pits already and coming out. So look at this. We've got AJ and Gordon Johncock. So AJ Foyt and Gordon Johncock got into it. We've got wheels and tires all the way down the back straightaway and a car in trouble, Len Sutton. So that was a pretty major accident. Stop for car number 76. At least four cars involved, and now we've got a disabled car sitting down in turn one, and we've got another car coming slowly down the front straightaway here. We'll try to see who that is. It's Parnelli, Parnelli Jones. So all the drivers who had their Parnelli brand new Parnelli. shiny Thanks Lotuses are out of it early on. And is this car still going to be sitting down here? Well, he's made it a bit further. Len Sutton driving the car on three wheels down the back straightaway and through the kink. He should be back there at some point, but it's going to take him quite a few laps to get around all the way around. Car number 47 appears and here we go. Trouble. More trouble. No this time car, car 47. That's the fifth place car according to the lap chart right now. Car number 47 is smoking. And where is car 47? As we've got car a car 52 exiting the smoking. pits right car now. This Lynn should be Parnelli. No fuel this time. And it is Parnelli Jones coming out of the pits. Pit we'll put him another lap down. He's already down two laps. And again, Len no Sutton driving time. around car on three wheels. And I should not have downshifted there. Don't You don't car need to downshift anymore in turn stop. three, which is kind of a nice feature of these high grip stop. rear car engine cars, the lightweight high grip rear engine cars. Two, three more cars in the pits. Good grief. Well, this is a race of attrition. That was a slow stop for car number 25. No fuel this time. For and it's Cheeseburg. 24. Cheeseburg was 47. So looks like everybody else is getting bitten by the Trenton curse today. No and we're 11, 13, 15 seconds ahead of Don Branson right now, who's in second place. So as the rest of the field has major issues, we're just sailing away from everybody else. And I'm already seeing the back of the field. This is uh, this is a weird. What a strange race this is. And we're going to be seeing a lot of different guys, a lot of unlikely guys in their first race possibly getting car points. Number 18 is smoking. Assuming there's not too much other trouble, though you hear car 18's in trouble. Not sure who that is. Uh, obviously, we're still kind of learning car numbers throughout this race. So I guess we'll see as well, a bunch of debris down here in turn number three on the entrance. That looked like a yellow car. Mario Andretti's up to sixth place. So for a rookie driver, that's pretty good. It's a roadster. So that was a roadster that got into it. And that is, I could not tell who that was. Uh, I could not tell who that was. I, it, I, I passed him so fast that I missed car number 18. the ID and car 18 is in the pits. Uh, we'll see who that is as Branson still holding on to second right now. But good grief. What a crazy race right now. Thankfully, we haven't been caught up in too much of it. Look at all that debris there in turn three. That car, whoever hit the wall over there was completely turned no fuel this time for straight car into the wall. 18. 18 is Rutherford. So Johnny Rutherford in trouble. As it just, as the attrition rate of this race is unreal. Mario Andretti is up to fifth. Mario is up to fifth. As we continue to track the process uh, or progress, with that rookie, a great Herdebees is in sixth. I believe Jim Herdebees should be, if he's stuck uh, to his reputation, will be in a front engine car. So he may be the highest running front engine car right now in the championship. As we're coming up behind the back of the field, and not going to, not sure exactly who this is going to be. Roger McCluskey, and McCluskey kind of pushes up a little bit. He looks like he's in a Brawner too. Is that a Brawner or is that a Halibrand? No, it's a Halibrand. So that's the type of car that I drove last year. 
We come up behind Lucas Dalton, who's very slow, very slow, very slow. Woo wee! And he's in a Watson. It's a customer Watson car right there, not particularly doing well. I believe that was the first car I've lapped on pace. I think McCluskey and a few other of these guys are uh, back here because of uh, trouble on the track. And look at the look at the handling difficulties of this of this front engine roadster right here. It's Arnie Knepper, and he was just he looked like he was hanging it out all the way down. And I believe this may be the car that was in the wall on the back straightaway. Uh, the color scheme would seem to match up with the the uh, junkyard down there. And we clear him, obviously. And bringing the car up to speed down the back straightaway. 14 and a half seconds. Well clear of Don Branson right now. Out to 15 on the back straightaway. Lifting off into turn three. Definitely really cutting through the field right now. There's going to be some huge gaps between everybody. But I guess, uh, you know, I guess that's to kind of be expected. Obviously, this is kind of new technology. A lot of people getting their hands on it for the first time in this season, though we've experimented with it as far back as 1963 when I bought a Lotus uh, at the end of that season. Of course, I put an Offenhauser in the back of it, and some of the comments got triggered uh, because, generally speaking, you were supposed to pair a Ford engine with a Lotus, but I put the uh, the Merck in the power of the... And by Merck in power, I mean, you know, built in a shed power of the... Offenhauser versus the uh, corporate might of Ford and now I have a Ford in the back so uh, capitalism ends up winning the day regardless as we head down the main straightaway now and uh, gonna be looking at uh, Joe Leonard so another one of these rookies which uh, may have a uh, bright future ahead but right now Joe Leonard is struggling in another Halibrand so a lot I sold a lot of Halibrand chassis for this year uh, with my championship winning effort of last year but it looks like I'm gonna be uh, the salesperson for the Brawner uh, this season because just just completely dusting off the chassis uh, manufacturer that manufactured my car for last year this year and we've got a lot of lap traffic now we've stretched the gap to 23 and a half seconds ahead of Don Branson right now there's another car in the pits as Mario is up to fifth Ruby is up to fourth and it looks like the final point paying position is Johnny Boyd right now and I think I, I, I seriously think a few and by a few I think a lot of front engine cars have kind of played this to their advantage and actually gotten up into the points so that's good adding into Indianapolis and we know the front engine cars advantage at Indianapolis is fuel and tire wear many of them will be able to go to the end of the race assuming that they qualify of course qualifications are going to be a key as they always are or most of the time are at Indianapolis so just making the race is going to be interesting. Qualifications for the 500 are going to be especially one to watch this year. Because we're in heavy lap traffic now. Billy Foster in a car that appears to be a Watson, but it appears to have an Offenhauser engine, not the Ford, because of the piping on the back, which is kind of it's kind of how you can tell the difference between an Offenhauser car and a and a Ford-powered car. If it has the big pipes at the back like my car has, it's a Ford. If it has the uh, just a small uh, one exhaust pipe out the back. It's an Offenhauser. As we come up behind Ziggy here, and it's very noisy right now because we've got a uh, Watson underneath. In fact, passing two Watsons right now. George Snyder in a very pretty purple car right there. Why can't I paint my car like that? Purple and yellow. I mean, he's, he's pretty much buddy. Pretty much buddy. When we get around him, and in fact, Snyder's in the... That's weird. Wow, so I just had a real-life mechanical failure. The batteries ran out in my controller. So, this is a first for uh, YouTube Racing Gaming. We're actually going to take a pit stop to change the battery, quote-unquote, in my car because it broke. A pit stop. So, this is what we're going to be doing. We don't need any fuel. We don't need any fuel. Uh, do we change the tires? No, we're not. We're just coming in to change the battery, and then we'll be out of the pit. So just essentially a drive-through. But we needed to come in and fix the car. I guess I should have stopped to change the tires, but regardless. Anyway, so there you go. We'll take our we'll take our knocks for having trouble 
out on the circuit. The Brawner didn't quite work. A great pit stop for car number 71. That was a great pit stop because we just drove through the field, the, drove through the pits. But regardless, I guess it was a fast pit stop, and I've been hit. One is limping back to the pits. Oh my goodness! And Don Branson just took the lead. Oh my God, this is exactly the same. It was AJ. AJ hit me. AJ Foyt hit me. And now Mario Andretti's only four seconds behind. Al Miller just in front. Well, we took, we took a mechanical failure pit stop, and now we're really in trouble here as we're heading on to five laps to go here at Trenton. Can we drive back up through the field after getting rammed in the rear end right there? AJ, not sure what happened there. I guess as I was getting up to speed, I guess I didn't look in the mirrors properly. Look at this debris down in turn one. Good grief. And Al Miller gonna go very slowly there. Gonna try to pass him, didn't quite do it. The car washed out just a little bit. Trying to dive it down the inside. Obviously the car's damaged. In fact, the rear end housing is gone. That debris down there in turn three is my is my part. Oh boy. Well, this is an interesting way to start the championship. But since that happened, I think I'm going to make that a rule from now on. I have to pit if the controller battery dies or something funny happens. It's kind of very interesting. So try not to hit your debris, David. We're going to try to get on the podium here. We're going to send it up the inside. Oh, Al Miller, that was a very one. risky move right there. But we do have lap traffic just out in front. I believe it's uh, Dalton. And hopefully he holds up Branson just a little bit. We've got, we've got to get back up to the front. And we've got Al Miller looking down the ins or down the be behind of me. Does that make any sense? I hope so. As my battered and beaten car, you can just see all the, you can see the engine back there, which is kind of funny now, and the, the rear end housing and the, uh, the uh, gearbox and all that stuff. All the money I spent this season to upgrade didn't quite work out, but look, the car is really starting to hook up quite well in turns three and four. Gonna be diving up the inside of Lloyd Ruby here, hopefully, and start pursuing my longtime rival Don Branson with four laps to go coming up to three it's gonna be a duel to the finish Dalton you better hold your line you better hold your line that's a Ford powered a Ford powered Watson you can tell again by the by the uh, piping on the back and try not to hit your own debris David that would be a very embarrassing part of this video as I'm really sending the car through turn three, absolutely on the throttle, just a tiny bit of a lift, and it's within a second. I'm within DRS zone. Oh, wait, no, that's not, we're not within DRS zone. We're going for it. We're going to try to catch Don Branson. He has been a thorn in my side for a very long time, and this is the duel, the classic duel, which we saw at Milwaukee. I didn't, wasn't able to pull it off there, but this time we're going to go for it. We had some mechanical failures. We had a crash. But it doesn't matter. We're going to try to win this race. We're going to try to win Trenton. We're going to spit in the face of the Trenton curse once again. Or at least try to. Going to be coming up to the white flag this time around. Once again, a dramatic finish here at Trenton Speedway in Indy 500 Evolution. We got the draft heading down the front straightaway. The white flag is out as Ruby or uh, Branson crosses the line. Down a gear. Now this is going to be where I'm going to be struggling. Coming off of the corner. Branson. Takes a high line. As I get on the throttle, I'm going to out-accelerate him out of the corner. Made the pass. Is he going to come back? Yes, he's coming back on the inside of the right-hander. I had to lift out just a little bit. Wheel to wheel. Wheel to wheel down into turn three. Branson takes the lead back. Is he going to cut me off going down into turn three? Yes, he is. Oh, we're making contact. Oh, no. And I overcorrected. Into the wall. Oh, my goodness. Uh, now, don't get hit. 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 Okay. We saved it. Mario. Mario Andretti. Can I hold him off? No. Mario is going through. Mario goes through. And, and we'll end up fifth. Mario passed me at the line. Ah, what a race. What a race. Now that was much more exciting than I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah. So Don Branson wins in a dramatic finish, a dramatic finish. And he respects me still. I, well, 
Good, good run, Don Branson. He understood hard racing, and I wasn't intentionally trying to wreck him. Uh, when we had Lloyd Ruby in second, Al Miller in third, Mario Andretti in his rookie race takes five championship points in fourth place, and I take fifth after just barely making it to the line. Al Unser Sr., or I guess Al Unser. There's no Al Unser Jr. yet. He hasn't been conceived. Uh, but Al Unser, Al Unser uh, is in sixth spot. Jim Herdebees in seventh in a front engine car. And Johnny Boyd rounds out the top eight in the points finishing positions. George Snyder just got knocked out. Stop. And there's the rest of the field uh, bringing up the rear. Len Sutton in that front engine car. So to send you off, let's take a look at that dramatic final lap from the replay angle. As we headed through turn three, you can just see the car just not particularly in the best of shape. Obviously, the rear end completely knocked off of it. The car's smoking, but we were going to try it. We were going to try it on Don Branson. And a dramatic final lap was about to ensue. As I got a real good run into turn one, you can see me cut the car down to the inside underneath Branson, right on the white line, but Branson was holding tough in that Watson, uh, is it a Ford or an Offenhauser? It's hard to tell, yeah, it's a Ford. So two Ford-powered cars here, side by side, down through the kink, all the way through the kink, held it together. Branson actually pulled out just a little bit of a lead, and then down to the inside, and I just pushed up a little bit, maybe he came down, but regardless, the result is the same. Somehow I managed to not wreck too hard <laughs> into the wall, but lost tons of positions and lost so much momentum that it was Mario Andretti absolutely making a huge stellar run right to the line underneath me and past me for that final position. Let's go on board for that dramatic final overtaking opportunity. Branson's on the outside and I sent it up the inside. This will probably be the definitive angle. Now he definitely came down. He definitely came down and somehow I managed to save it keeping it just off the wall. So thank you guys so much for watching Indy 500 Evolution. Be sure to hit the like on it if you enjoyed and subscribe for the entire Let's Play of this game. We're gonna try to finish it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube and we'll see you in the next video.